you're still watching ways now national red wine day is always a good time for red wine today we throw out all those stuffy rules about how and when to drink this nectar from the gods instead we grab our coolest glass and savour the taste of our favorite red wine now red wines don't always have a uh, have to rest at a temperature of between 65 to 70 degrees before you can enjoy a glass in fact there are some experts who say it's perfectly acceptable to refrigerate red wines and drink them cold especially in exceptionally hot weather so hoist your glass in a toast to National Red Wine Day. Day. Wow, now, today we are drinking water. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> because if we drink red wine, we will not be seen. <laughs> we will not be seen this script. Oh, come on, there are some non alcoholic red wines. Like, I, I, I don't drink. drink. It's not alcoholic, it's forget juice. it. It's juice. So, yeah, so I have it's a not juice. juice. Like, I, I, I know a brand. I can't do commercial for them, but I know a brand, it's, and it's my favorite uh, red, red wine you brand. You did advert for them, it's, we know them. But the truth it's is, not, it's, it's, not, it's not the, the three-letter well, alphabet that you know. It's, it's not that one. It's, it's still it's juice. Way so better than that I one. I have a boss and he says, if there's no alcohol in your red wine, it is juice. So please, rest this case. You're just shading us. <laughs> I don't, I don't drink, but well, I, I don't call it red you wine. I just call it whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't drink wine. as well. So we're having our own here. Just picture it red in color. <laughs> Adzobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sansi, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so uh, Minister of Information, uh, Lai Mohammed, has um, in the news today, um, 825 Nigerians deported from Ghana in the past one year. That's between January 2018 mm. to February 2019. And part of... Um, their reasons was that um, um, the Nigerians are not, you know, paying fees. They are charging them one million trade levy mm -hmm. on Nigerian traders, and they're giving them 14 days to pay. So if you don't pay, they're going to shut down your shops. Already, like 300 shops have been shut down, and about 600 have been like seized. You don't have access to it anymore. So. Federal government uh, spokesperson, uh, Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, is calling out on Ghana that it is not okay. And currently, they are working on ways to rescue the situation. So, um, yeah, he's basically just voicing out that it's not okay that Ghana should, you know, you should take a chill pill. Yeah, yeah because, calm, because, calm down, small. Yeah, also because but, we do not do the same here. And for once, I'm happy that our government is interceding and speaking up for its people in places where it should speak up. And if I have been following the story because it has to do with small businesses, mm -hmm. and there isn't any real case why that should be there. And, you know, you get to hear side talks of saying the Nigerians are doing better, than the, the, the Nigerians are stealing from their economy and all that. But I'm very glad that the government is stepping in, and I hope that they do so effectively. And the ambassador, whoever it is that represents us in Ghana, just makes sure that action is really taken yeah. and we do not repeat the things that we suffered in South Africa. And he made one very valid point that we have about over one million Ghanaians living in Nigeria. And quite frankly, the living condition is not that intense and uh, 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 unsupportive around here. Yeah, so, compared um, to what our people yeah. face in Ghana. But it's also important that we, that we work on ourselves, develop Nigeria. Yeah. If Nigeria was a lot better, we won't be running out to get permanent residency what? in countries like Ghana. Well, as, as Come as on. permanent residency. So I see it also as opening up businesses because we also have to import whatever it is that we have, skills and products and services right. to other countries. So I don't just look at it as, you know, running away from the country. You can't have businesses. So we're talking about legitimate business mm. people. Mm -hmm. um, let me not drag it out because I see who are just telling me we're dragging this out. <laughs> okay. What's your story? <laughs> so today I just wanted to do something special. I don't have anything in the news to report, but I just want to draw our attention to what is happening in Southern Katna. And why am I doing that? Often we um, use, we fight other causes outside the shores of our country with so mm -hmm. much enthusiasm, so much fervor, and then we plead the cause of others, which is okay and it is fine because once, what affects one affects all. And I remember when we were fighting for Black Lives Matter, which is a very valid cause, we all had our screens black. And it is red for Southern Kaduna, and you're rarely seeing that. I do applaud, applaud the few actors and actresses that have come out to say things about that, but I need for us to take this seriously. All the Twitter fans, everybody talking about America politics, what happens, who would speak for us? Who is putting up a red signal for us? We have to do that ourselves and call enough attention 
-hmm. to the callous and mindless killings happening in Southern Cardinal. Absolutely. Completely I think agree. it's well said, you know, because even just today again, they still had um, some bandits going to go and kill people in, um, in a community in Kaduna. So it's not something that we can just keep quiet and pretend like it does not exist. Human beings are living in southern Kaduna mm -hmm. and we cannot be fighting Weak. or in both people courses yes. and all of and that then, so it, and, it, it, and leave our leave home us. unchecked you know so. because if that impunity continues so today is southern Kaduna tomorrow it can be anywhere it can be anyone it can be anyone all right so my story is actually quite um I found it very interesting because it's very unusual for you to see things like this happening so from Vanguard newspaper a left 300 million naira um, diversion Quara commissioner resigns her post. Her name is Aisha Ahmed um, Pateji, if I pronounced her name correctly. So according to um, the reports that I read, um, there was an allegation that she, um, she, I mean, there was a diversion of um, um, 300 million naira. She's the commissioner of, for special duties. Um, and what, she- what, what is that office again? So th that's- Special duties. Special duties I don't know what special duties would mean to them. You know, special duties is special duties. But, you know, according to the, the, the allegations, they w was um, that they were in reconcilable um, crisis over alleged diversion of 300 million Naira local government funds. And um, she has written her letter to say that she's, um, she's had, I mean, she thanks the governor for the opportunity and she's hoping that, you know, um, blah 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 that and she stepped down my own my own happiness is that this is the first time or i don't know if maybe there's anybody that has stepped down it's before rare. it's very rare for you to see people that are being um accused. accused of things like this you know step aside i'm happy she stepped aside and i'm also happy that the governor has also said that they will still go ahead to investigate okay you know i was about the, to yes, ask that. they will still go ahead to investigate the alleged um, uh, misappropriation of funds. Mm -hmm. And even during the interrogation, they called two of the local government uh, members, and they said that there's no such thing as any diversion of funds. So they are investigating, and hopefully we'll be able to get the, the final um, con uh, conclusion Verdict, on yeah. this matter. But I'm very happy that, you know, for the first time, Somebody is actually action. stepping aside to yeah. say, you know well, what, I think I've had it. I'm not interested I don't know in her. I don't know so much about her. She hasn't been in the news um, a lot. But I think from what I hear, this is a sign of integrity. However, I am glad they're also going to do further investigations because that money monkey did not carry it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we <need> no. To, <laughs> no, no. We need to find out where 300 yeah. no. uh, million naira we went to. Happened. Right, mm -hmm. yes. What happened to me? So I'm, I'm happy I'm happy that she's done that, you know, and, you know, because she's a woman, I had to take that story because I'm so sure that some of these are, uh, corrupt allegations that, you know, I know they'll come at me, but the truth is I'm sure most of them, if they were women, they'll be able to, you know what, use a human face and say, you know what, let me step aside. I've been in positions where it seems like, okay, I'm going to spoil things. I'll just take a walk, you know, and allow the people to do it. Then if you are that important to the cause and everything, definitely, your impact will be felt, you know, right. when you, your your absence will be felt, like mm -hmm. the way we felt Ike's absence. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> I had to make your head swell. All right, so <laughs> we'll see you after the break to discuss the culture of superiority. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.